the nutrient value in leafy greens today is maybe an eighth of what it was even 20 years ago. And so the idea that we can get all of our nutrients from our food is right. We should be able to get all of our nutrients from our food, but we just can't. The answer is a both and. So both um, zinc, selenium, and copper are often in leafy greens. Oats and quinoa are really good sources of magnesium and selenium. Cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, that kind of stuff, great sources and we're probably not getting enough. So supplementing that to some degree is really helpful. When we increase zinc, we have to increase copper because we can't increase, we can't absorb zinc if we don't have copper. And then zinc, selenium, and copper is sort of the trio bonus package for our immune system. And we actually now know that people who are deficient in zinc, selenium, and copper, the common cold can be deadly. Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves and enjoy a little chocolate. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. A couple weeks ago, while I was editing and prepping this episode, because they all take a lot of time, I texted my friend and I said, Please mark your calendar and listen to my episode on June 7th. You will love this girl, Hallie Brooke with Live Nourished. I'm editing and falling in love with her all over again. And she said, okay, I'm going to mark it. But unfortunately, I don't have all of your cell phone numbers, so I couldn't send you that same message, but I really wish I could have. My conversation with Hallie Brooke today uh, encompasses all things health, physical, mental, spiritual, Hallie comes with such a positive energy that stems from, I believe at least, it stems from combining a deep understanding of science and nutrition with a very realistic and holistic approach. At one point, she defines nourishment for us, and it was kind of like a Jerry Maguire moment for me. You had me at nourished. (laughs) Like... That's, I just, I felt like, I don't even remember who said that in Jerry Maguire, you had me at hello. Like she had me at nourished when she described that. We also talk about specific vitamins most Americans are deficient in. I know you heard a little bit of that at the very beginning. And we talk some more about other vitamins. We talk about foods to help combat that, how to choose high quality supplements, signs of poor gut health. And we kind of take a deep dive in the beginning into chronic exhaustion. Hallie is a nationally board certified health and wellness coach, as well as a functional medicine certified health coach based out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. She's also a personal trainer, an avid mountain biker, dog lover, whitewater rafter, skier, hiker. You know, this is my kind of gal. (laughs) I would love to spend a weekend with Hallie showing me the ropes in Colorado. Now, just a warning. I do mention in this episode that I just came in flying and hot. And I was a little frazzled when we got on. And I guess I didn't get my mic set up correctly. So I sound a bit like I'm in a tin can. Sorry about that. But I promise the wisdom and tools Hallie brings um, completely makes up for the poor sound quality on my end. She sounds great. I just sound like, again, like I'm in a tin can. Hey, and by the way, speaking of resources, if you dig resources, be sure to check out the resources tab over at gracedhealth.com. I have free downloads to support your physical and spiritual health, like scriptures to pray over your health, a 14 day health and body image devotional, and make ahead protein packed breakfast rep- recipes. So go over to gracedhealth.com slash resources and grab all of your free stuff. Let's bring on Hallie. Hallie, welcome to the Graced Health Podcast. Thank you, Amy. It's so it's such an honor to be on here. Thank you for having me. You know, I just did something different with you before we hit record, and I came in here really frazzled with a lot on my plate this morning. And I love that just knowing the little bit that I do about you, that I said, you know what, I just need to pause and take like two breaths to bring myself down. And I could hear you doing the same thing. 
And I'm just really excited to dig into uh, Live Nourished, which is what your business name is, and uh, maybe take it from a different perspective than just, um, you know, than just eating all of the right foods and exercising the right way, because you have a really uh, I, I introduced you before you came on, but you just have a lot of experience and wisdom behind you. Um, so I'm, I'm super pumped. I'm pumped for this. So th- first of all, thanks for breathing with me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for that reminder. You said yeah. that. And I was like, oh yeah. Yep. Doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when I was connected with you, um, you just have a really incredible uh, array of ways that you can help um, your community and help people in, um, in their health, in their, you know, like I said, your, your company name is Live Nourished and I really appreciate that. But as I was kind of digging in, you know, you have um, functional medicine background, you have a big focus on gut health, with, which I don't want to, I do want to talk a little bit about. Um, we talk, you talk about nourishment, but the one that really popped out to me that I think might be interesting to my community is this whole concept of chronic exhaustion. Yeah. So my first question is, how would you define chronic exhaustion? Yeah, great question. So um, I'm going to let a client story define chronic exhaustion. So I had a client come to me who, um, mom of three kids, wife runs a business. And she, what she said to me is she was like, I just keep doing all the things, but when it's time to go pick up my youngest, all I want to do is lay down on the couch and take a nap. And it's all I can do to get up and get in the car and go pick him up. Um, and she's just kind of like, just kind of going through life the absolute best she can and has zero energy, like just is hanging by a thread and barely functioning. Um, not being creative, not able to hang out with friends, not able to do all the things she wants to do, just doing the things she has to do and barely surviving through it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people can relate to that too. And even if, you know, even if they're not running kids around, but they might be going to work, they may be, you know, involved in older kids' school activities. I mean, you name it. And I certainly resonate with that. I mean, there were definitely times that I feel like my kids would get home and then I'd be like, I have to lay down for a couple of minutes. I'm like, I had all day to, <laughs> to, you know, to be able to do that because I was super fortunate to be, um, you know, at home, um, yeah. because it's a decision that my husband and I made together. But yeah, I think that that really afflicts a lot of people. Um, talk to me some about the reasons for it. Yeah, totally. So chronic fatigue <clears throat> and, you know, brain fog fits into that too. Just the kind of like, I just can't quite complete a thought (laughs) brain fog. Um, Those two are really integrated. And so what we find is the underlying causes of that are often um, like really high stress. And sometimes it's not even necessarily that someone's life looks stressful, sort of like what you said. You're like, I'm home with my kids. Like, why am I so tired? But oftentimes we just run kind of hot. You know, our life might not be super stressful, but our own emotional state, the thoughts in our head, we're, we are just stress is kind of high. And so what happens when our stress is high is we've got cortisol pumping through our system all the time, which taxes our adrenal glands. And um, your our bodies don't know the difference between the stress of trying to run away from a saber-toothed tiger versus the stress of making sure that I have meals and checking my email and checking my phone. To our body, it's the same thing. So we overrun our adrenal glands. We end up in adrenal fatigue. Now we're not pumping the adrenaline and the cortisol like we should. So we're totally exhausted. And then we add on top of that some pretty significant nutrient deficiencies because we're just not getting what we need from our food. And most people's multivitamins are a total joke and not actually helpful. So now we have, you know, nutrient deficiencies as well. And then, you know, the functional medicine science side, if you remember back to high school biology and the little mitochondria in the cell that you had to draw, those are our energy creators. So now if those don't have the nutrients that they need, if they're not getting the adrenaline and the cortisol that they need, we just, our battery is drained and we have no energy. 
Okay. Well, then the follow up to that is so what do we do about it? Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the one simple, magical thing that we can do, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> the bummer answer to that is like there yes. is no one magical thing. <laughs> I do know this. Totally. If there's a magic bullet that I could just throw at people, I would probably be a millionaire. Um, There isn't. And so it's this integrated connection of, all right, we need to reduce our stress. We need to increase our nutrients. um, And then we need to, we need to focus on helping our mitochondria, you know, our batteries, our body batteries function better. So Typically what we do with people is actually exactly how you started this podcast, just stopping and going, um, and helping our body move out of that sympathetic nervous system and into our parasympathetic nervous system. So we can bring our high rev down enough so that we actually can rest. And then simple things like, um, adding vitamin B. So we used to think that only vegans and vegetarians were deficient in vitamin B because we used to think vitamin B12 came from animals. We now know that vitamin B12 actually comes from bacteria. So the reason we get it from animals more than from vegetables is because we wash our vegetables. So we're washing the bacteria in the soil that actually produces the vitamin B off versus the cows are just eating the grass with the soil and all the bacteria. But now with you know, commercial farming and pesticides and herbicides and all of these things, the animals aren't getting that either. So now five out of seven people are deficient in B12. And that's a crucial element for energy. Um, The combination of zinc, selenium, and copper is also super crucial. And 80% of Americans are deficient in that as well, because we're not getting it from our soil. And zinc, selenium, and copper, um, fun fact, are actually in batteries. So (laughs) real batteries have zinc, selenium, and copper in it. Um, Turns out our body battery, so to speak, needs that as well. So that's a really easy place to start is just get a little bit more nutrients on board. Um, And then from there, then we want to switch from, you know, putting sludge in our body to putting good, healthy fats, good, healthy proteins so that we're supporting our mitochondria from that side. So it's this, I wish it was this like easy one size fits all, but it's this integrated thing of reduce our stress, up our nutrients, up our food quality intake and we'll, we'll heal. Okay. And just, just to clarify, um, so zinc, selenium and copper are three different nutrients, but you're bundling those Mm -hmm. together. So does that mean that that's, um, like, are there particular foods that have all of three of those in there or is it more of a, a supplement or like, talk to me about, about the, the thought process of, of all three of those bundling up together in that, you know, example of how we can (laughs) start to help with the chronic fatigue? Totally. Great question. Um, so the answer is, is probably both. Um, ideally we would be able to get all of that from our food. The bummer is that, you know, the, the nutrient value in leafy greens today is maybe an eighth of what it was even 20 years ago. And so the idea that we can get all of our nutrients from our food is right. We should be able to get all of our nutrients from our food, but we just can't. So um, the answer is a both and. So both um, zinc, selenium, and copper are often in leafy greens. Oats and quinoa are really good sources of magnesium and selenium. Uh, Cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, that kind of stuff, great sources. And we're probably not getting enough. So so supplementing that to some degree is really helpful. Zinc, when we increase zinc, we have to increase copper because we can't increase, we can't absorb zinc if we don't have copper. And then zinc, selenium, and copper is sort of the trio bonus package for our immune system. And we actually now know that people who are deficient in zinc, selenium, and copper, the common cold can be deadly. So then we add in, you know, a more intense virus, um, and we, we have some significant issues. So zinc, selenium, and copper are sort of this triad of immune and energy that work together. And if we up one, we have to up the other one. Well, since we're on the, the subject of nutrients, I want to dig in a little bit um, to this. So talk to me about multivitamins, because you just you made a comment a second ago, you're like, yeah, they may not be doing as, as much as you think they're doing. Because if you look at the back of a multivitamin, it will often have zinc, selenium, and copper. 
you know, some of the other ones that you mentioned, like, you know, uh, magnesium, which my experience is that normally doesn't have enough, but that's, that can be a different story. But, um, so can you, is that something you can get in a multi? And if not, then why do you recommend it being, I mean, does it come like in that trio? Uh, talk us through that in terms of a supplementation regimen. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a guide that I have on my website, which we can get out to your audience, is a guide on how to pick high quality supplements. And there's a couple things that you really want to look for in a high quality supplement. So um, the New York Times, I think it was maybe three years ago, published a study that said that multivitamins don't work. And all of us in the functional medicine community just went, ugh. <laughs> Um, because the, the multivitamin that they researched was Centrum, which is just absolutely worthless. Um, and the reason it's worthless is because it's all synthetic supplements. So it's not zinc, selenium, copper, magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin C that's coming from food. They're synthetically creating that in a lab and then binding it together. And what actually happens when you put something that is not a food in our body is best case scenario, our body doesn't recognize it and you just pee it out. Worst case scenario is your body actually recognizes it as a foreign agent. And so your body starts attacking it like it would attack a virus. And so then we start seeing these triggers of like autoimmune diseases. So that's sort of like best case to worst case scenario. So what do you do? The first thing you want to do is you want to look to see that your supplement, whether it's an isolated supplement or like a multivitamin that has it all together, that it's coming from whole food. So it's a whole food based multivitamin or supplement or whatever. The second thing that I really encourage people to look for is that it's third party tested. My favorite third party is an organization called the NSF, National Sanitation Foundation. I love that label, that certificate, because it double it does a double test. So the first test is, is everything that they say is in it, in it, and is it bioavailable? So not just does it have vitamin C, but does it have vitamin C in an, absor an absorbable form? And then the second test is, is it 100% free of the five top contaminants, which are mold, bacteria, um, radiation, which a lot of people don't really think about, herbicides, pesticides, and heavy metals. So obviously, if you're going to be taking a concentrated supplement like a multivitamin or a supplement. We don't want it to be laden with heavy metals because now we're just concentrating those heavy metals. So those are the two things that I really encourage people to look for is, is it a whole food supplement? And then is it certified by a third party? And then, yeah, we, we want to read that label and see, does it have zinc, selenium, copper? Does it have iron if you're a woman and menstruating? Does it have uh, vitamin C in the, in citric acid instead of ascorbic acid, that kind of stuff. Well, and as a side note to my community back in January, 2019, I had a registered dietitian on who's a sports dietitian. Cool. And, uh, we were talking some about fuel, fueling your teen athlete. And she actually recommended that any kind of protein powder you may get is also NSF because particularly with, with elite athletes and collegiate athletes where they're doing testing, that's something they have to know that what they're putting in their body is safe. So I love right. that there's a lot of, there's those, that commonality of what you're talking about from a supplement, which also a protein powder is typically considered a supplement Absolutely. as well. It's not a, it's not considered a food under the FDA. So um, yeah, looking for that label and you know, you're going to pay a little bit more for it, but your the value that you get is probably beyond what you're paying for. Absolutely. Yeah. If you think about, you know, a cheap multivitamin from typical big box grocery store. Yeah. yeah. You're paying money for it. And best case scenario, you're getting nothing from it. Worst case scenario, it's actually harming your body. You're actually better off not taking that versus, yeah, let's spend a little bit more on something that we know is actually good for your body. And we have crazy research studies now that show, you know, people always say eating organic is more expensive. It is, but we have some, some pretty cool long-term research studies now that actually can show the long-term cost differential of not eating organic in terms of co-pays and medical costs later in life outweigh the cost of eating organic 10 to 1. And we now have economists who've like done the math for us, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, I'm going to say too, you know, I've got these two, there's just four of us in my house. Like I don't even have a big family, but I have these two 
male athletes <laughs> who consume copious amounts of food. And uh-huh. I had just like, as much as I would love to buy organic strawberries, like I, I can't, I mean, they're going right. through one of those courts, like every time I mean, like the, a day. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it's, and it's hard. So I, I, I want, I do want to say that, like, I love that research and I love that. And that might kind of convict me to look into that a little bit more, but I also like, I think we all, and I'm sure you would be too, like get the strawberries regardless, mm-hmm. <laughs> even if they're, even if they're not organic, cause they're, they're going to be doing, um, they're going to be doing some good for sure. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you for doing, following that rabbit hole down with me because that I think is really helpful. And we will absolutely link to that um, guide to high quality supplements. Yeah, for sure. That'll be yeah. really good. Okay. So let's go back to this whole thing of chronic exhaustion. Okay. Now I cannot speak for my community, but I know, <laughs> I know my story. Yeah. And right now, the story that I am in or the, the season that I am in is I am super passionate about what I do. I love doing this. I actually took a, um, are you familiar with Clifton Strengths Finders? Yes. Yeah. This is, this is a side note. So I just did this and it came back that input is my number one strength, which means uh-huh. learning new things, talking to diff- different people, hearing different perspectives. And I'm like, this is why I love podcasting so much. Like (laughs) this is why I feel so fed and why I love having these conversations. So, you know, and then of course there's all of these other things that I just feel is, I I know is um, straight from God. It's where he wants me right now. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm I'm like peering over a cliff of burnout and Mm -hmm. feeling like I'm doing a lot. And I, and I just can't, I I've got so much on my plate so I'm kind of stuck in this, like the and, right? Like I'm stuck in the, I, I love what I do and I know I'm supposed to be here and I know God wants me here and I'm tired and I don't know how long I can sustain this. Um, so I'm just curious if you have any, and I know that this is probably getting more into like cognitive therapy, but you know, from a chronic exhaustion, functional medicine, I mean, it's all together, right? It's a very holistic approach. Um, I'm just curious if you have any resources or tools for people who obviously don't have my exact same story, but might feel like they are in a similar space. Yeah, absolutely. You're doing something so meaningful and so powerful that you're so passionate about, and it's changing it's changing the world, and it also fills you up. And you're a human um, yeah. who has X amount of hours in the day and X amount of energy in the bank, and we're, we're like pushing that limit a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I would put podcasting in the category of business, right? Like you're a business owner, you do this. So this is actually something I just learned, man, probably three weeks ago, super crazy Two studies. So Forbes published one of them and I'll mess up the quote a little bit, but basically Forbes, uh, business, whatever, did a study on business owners and gave them like a well-being profile that's all based around self-care and self-care on the whole spectrum. So self-care from like, are you eating good food? Are you exercising? How's your mental health? All of that stuff. And then they compared the, you know, these people's self filled out study, whatever, to the income that they're bringing in in their business. And what they found is that the CEOs and business people who prioritize their own self-care and scored in the top 90% bring in two times more income than the people who scored in the middle or the bottom. And so um, I talk to women entrepreneurs a lot. And so one of the things that I say to them is like, you are the most important investment in your business. Sometimes that might look like, okay, I'm going to take four less meetings this week, even though meetings are what push my business forward, what move this, this ship forward. Because if I'm not in a good place, like we got nothing left. So part of it is, especially I so relate to that because I, um, I also love what I do and I'm so passionate about it and I can just go, 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 go. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Ugh, and I've got nothing left. <laughs> So part of it is is us as kind of go-getters, high rev people <sighs> taking a breath and pulling back and going, okay, I don't want to burn out. Because the truth is, you know, if you and I burn out, the message that we have to share is done. Um, right. 
And so even if that means slowing down a little bit, like that might mean slowing down a little bit. That might mean taking a month off or taking a week off, which is hard to do. And then letting that brain calm down. Cause I can take a week off and my brain is still going a million miles a minute. I don't know if that's a super concrete answer for you, but part of it is like taking a step back enough to value who you are and what the Lord has put on your heart as your mission and going, okay, what do I need to, I think about Jesus and, you know, Jesus had this rhythm of being with people and then silence and solitude and being with people and silence and solitude. And there were multiple times that we can read in scripture where the disciples look at Jesus and they're like, where are you going? <laughs> and he's like, I'm, I'm going to go be by myself now. And the disciples are kind of left scratching their heads. But I think, I think sometimes as mission driven women, we just keep putting out and putting out and putting out and creating and going and learning instead of going like, nope, I'm going to go be by myself for a little bit. So that's my number one piece of advice is where can you look at your calendar and create some space to breathe? Yeah. And then we can add in like the nutrition and the food and all of that stuff. But I think until we not nail that piece of you are the most important aspect of this mission. And if you aren't caring for yourself, then the mission is going to fall apart. Well, I think that's great advice. Thank you. And I think that that's probably very relatable across a lot of different scenarios. I mean, like I said, I know that mine is, um, you know, I'm just, was that's just on my, on my head and my heart right now. Have you read um, the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry? Yes. And I John love Mark it. Comer. Yeah. Yes. And actually, so I, I facilitate a, um, a young adult women's group, which is super exciting for me because these women are like half my age and it's cool. really fun to be like on the newness of everything with them. And that book is what we are reading right now. And it's funny. We all had like a kind of a late start. Like we came into the first week, like I haven't read the book. I haven't read the book. And then we're all getting caught up and it's like, Oh, you're writing to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it is really good. It it's is really so good. <laughs> it's so funny you bring that up. They so John Mark Comer and then one other guy have taken that book and this other guy's book and put it together into a podcast series. It's like little 20 minute things that I think is called To Hell with Hustle and Hurry. And Ooh, okay. I'll have to check that out. Oh so good. I am currently hooked on that. And that's where I got the the Jesus thing. Like that is from the last podcast I listened to with them. Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's what reminded me. Cause I was like, I had just finished that section in the book and I'm like, yes. that's exactly what he was talking about. So, okay. I'll, I'll uh, try and find that podcast and I'll try to put it in the show link or in the show notes if they've got a website. Um, you know, and it's funny cause we're talking whenever I kind of prep up for an interview, I always kind of have an idea of where I want to go. And it's funny cause you, we are sort of getting into more about stress management Mm -hmm. than I was expecting to. And the other thing too, that is resonating is I also had um, another functional medicine um, doctor on um, the show a couple times. And one of them was talking about your gut health and your gut microbiome. And so it was with Dr. Richard Harris, who's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, and he was saying one of the one of the things that he really recommends for healthy gut health is is meditation and breathing uh-huh. and pulling down your and managing that stress level, which I think is, you know, it's funny, the more I learn, the more I feel like like all roads lead back to gut health. All roads lead back to gut health. All of them. <laughs> and I know that this is yeah, and I know this is a focus of yours. So let's kind of take let's take a left turn and go down here because um what are what are some of the, when let's just, let's back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. How would you define someone having poor gut health? Cause I feel like that can manifest in a lot of different ways. Yeah. It can manifest in a ton of different ways. Super fun. Hippocrates, however many 250,000 years, no, that's way too long. 2,500 years ago <laughs> uh, said all health begins or ends in the gut. And we now know that that's true. So Gut health is so interesting because it can manifest in so many different ways. So when someone is dealing with poor gut health, they might have chronic fatigue. They might have eczema and psoriasis. 
Um, they might have rashes. They might have gas and bloating. They might have constipation. Um, they might have uh, heartburn and indigestion. They might have mood swings. That's a crazy one. We now can link most sort of chronic psychological disorders to gut health. Like schizophrenia often equals leaky gut. Yeah. That's nuts. It's crazy. Whenever someone comes to me and has has something that they haven't been able to fully figure out, I am always going to gut health. Like you're tired, cool, let's fix your gut. You've got eczema, sweet, let's fix your gut. You have like vision changes, let's fix your gut. You've got migraines, let's fix your gut. Um, like <laughs> all of it. And I think what happens, so I'm a huge fan of Western medicine. It matters, it's important. I believe in Western medicine. And part of the issue with Western medicine is that, you know, we go to Western medicine doctors with these issues, with eczema, psoriasis, chronic fatigue. And what happens is we're typically given a prescription to to fix that thing. Like you have eczema, I'm going to give you a steroid cream. You can put it on your arm and the eczema will go away as long as you keep that screen, that cream on it. But then as soon as you stop, that eczema is going to come back. And so we sort of say the difference between Western medicine and functional medicine is Western medicine turns off the fire alarm and then calls it done versus functional medicine looks at the fire alarm and goes, okay, why is that going off? Where's the fire? And oftentimes the fire is gut health. And then when we link that back to chronic fatigue, our, you know, our gut microbiome, we are, I might get these numbers wrong because I just learned them, but I think we are a hundred thousand or a hundred billion human cells and then 700 trillion bacteria cells. So, which is crazy. Like, yeah, we're actually just hosts. We're, we're like <laughs> 10 to 1, 10 to 1 <laughs> bacteria. Um, Alien. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> really, really. and when we think about healing these, these big complex things, we're actually going to get a lot more traction by dealing with the bacteria that makes us who we are versus dealing with the the 1% human cells, which is fascinating. And it's crazy too, because I think, you know, it's like, I have really smart women in my community and I know that they love to investigate. They love to kind of think about things and like, well, what could be causing this? And I, I love how you said Western medicine turns off the fire alarm and functional medicine asks where the fire is. I think that's a mm-hmm. great example um, and, or an illustration of, of what functional medicine does. And I think a lot of us in my community, like, we have that. We have that desire to know where the fire is. And what is challenging with gut health is, um, and kind of knowing like if you're having, if it's a gut health issue or if it's not, it's like, well, you know, I eat a variety of vegetables and I'm, you know, I'm doing several things. And so there's not, again, there's not one magic bullet like we were talking about with the chronic fatigue. Yeah. But I'm curious if you have seen some things, you know, my my community is a lot of women in their 40s and 50s. And so I'm curious if you have um seen some things that have had uh, some success or some progress or improvement because the other thing about this age range is, you know, your hormones are going whack. Yeah. And um you know, you've got older kids, which is whack in its own way. And, you know, like, or you're sending them off and like you're transitioning into a new season because you don't have kids at home or something like that. So I'm just curious if you have had some um, situations where you can say, you know, like, hey, this really worked for my clients in the 40s and 50s. And, and maybe that would be something to try. So it's interesting you mentioned, you know, like I eat healthy vegetables and, and these things. And so I don't know if my gut health is good super relatable. And I think a lot of people can actually say that like I eat well. So what could possibly be wrong? Um, especially women in their forties and fifties. So hormones have a huge effect on our gut health. And so oftentimes what happens is, you know, hormones are changing. We've lived a lot of life and probably done some damage to our gut in that life. Even if we've, you know, for the most part eaten well, et cetera. So we end up at 40 or 50 And we have some underlying issues. And so even though we're eating well, it's sort of like um, if you have a cut on your arm, if you just keep scratching it, 
that cut's not going to heal. So we have, what we do, especially with our older clients is we just do like a 30 to 40 day elimination. And we say, okay, we're just going to cake everything that could possibly be causing issues out. And then we're going to use L-glutamine as one of my favorite supplements to kind of coat that gut lining and improve that mucosa lining. And it just works like a Band-Aid. Um, it just goes down in your gut and it kind of sits on that gut lining so that you can keep fueling your body, keep eating food and heal that. And it's super helpful. I have one client who um, had a thyroidectomy in her 20s, which is crazy. That's super early to have that happen and is now going through menopause. So we've got no thyroid. Now we've got like estrogen and testosterone. Oh, bless her. Yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> like, oh man, just a lot of pieces. Um, and so what we did with her is we said, okay, you know, one of the things that affects hormones is inflammation. One of the main things that affects inflammation is gut health. So we're just going to do an elimination diet. So we did an elimination food plan. We took her through a gut healing protocol with some targeted probiotics and some L-glutamine and and slippery elm and a couple other things. And what ended up happening is her hormones didn't balance out per se, because she's still going through menopause. Like that's still a process, but the amount of hot flashes that she had dramatically decreased. Um, the amount of kind of menopause forgetfulness that she had dramatically decreased. And it was funny. One of the things she said to me at the end of this whole protocol, she was like, I knew that I felt terrible, but I didn't know how terrible I felt until I started feeling better. And it's just, it's a simple gut. It's a simple gut protocol. Like it's not rocket science. It's remove, repair, replace, re-inoculate, reintroduce. And it works super well. And especially with lived a lot of life, hormones in flux, all of the things. It's just a good baseline. Like let's get this functioning right so that this can support the rest of your life. I love that. Yeah. And that's something, so that's something that you can lead people through, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Very okay. Much. That is a really great segue. Um, that very last bit that you said about like, let's do all of this so you can live your life. So when mm -hmm. I was kind of looking in and trying to figure out how I wanted to structure this conversation, I pulled this from your website and I think that the, that those who have been with me a while are going to know why I was so excited to talk with you. So I'm, I'm going to quote you if you don't mind. Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you said, I learned to live one day at a time. I learned that health was not just about food and exercise, but about being whole inside and out. I learned that living nourished takes more than just eating healthy or working out. And that in fact, sometimes health means enjoying a burger, taking a nap instead of going on a run and resting instead of pushing hard. I am passionate about health not just physical health, but mental, spiritual, and physical health. And I am passionate about helping my clients learn to live nourished lives, to be kind to themselves and grow and heal every day. So <laughs> yay, all the claps <laughs> to this. But, but I really wanted to, um, I wanted to pull that out because, you know, you have given us a lot of really great, solid um, guidance, some information. We're talking about things, but, but you also have a holistic approach and a holistic perspective. And I so appreciate that because I'm almost to the point where I'm not really willing to have a conversation with someone about like, this is the only way that you can do it. And if you're not doing it, it's wrong. Like I, that's just, I'm just not doing that. Um, okay. And then your company name, we talked about this at the beginning, your company name is live nourished. Yeah, I have a huge focus on nourishment right now. Um, and so it's really a multifaceted word. What does nourishment mean to you? Mm, yes. So I'm wearing my t-shirt, which you probably can't see. I, but... I do see it and I love it. <laughs> so the way we define um, like living a nourished life at Live Nourished is to treat me like I love me eat vegetables, drink water, breathe, move, sweat, sleep, rest, create, pray, center, play, choose joy, be me. Um, uh. And so that's our definition. Like that's, that's what we say nourishing is. And one of the things that we challenge our clients to in, in the time that they work with us is by the time someone's done working with us, I want them to be able to make a nourishing choice 100% of the time. And when I say that to people, 
when they first start working with me, they're like, well, I don't want to eat a salad 100% of the time. And I'm like, good. I don't want (laughs) to eat a salad 100% of the time. And so we talk about, you know, taking a moment to pause, to rest, to check in with ourselves, to check in with the Lord and goes, what is actually going to nourish me right now? And sometimes that's going for a run. And sometimes that's taking a nap. And sometimes that's going out for a margarita and chips and salsa with friends because that connection is as nourishing as making a homemade vegetable rich meal at home. Nourishment is really, you know, like we are mind, body, spirit humans. Um, and we're, we can't disconnect those things. Like we can't just eat quote unquote healthy all the time and be nourished. So what is it that's truly going to feed you, that's going to energize you, that's going to center you right now, today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, like right now in this moment today. Um, So that's how we define nourishment. And it is, it's such a multifaceted word. Well, and I like how you say right now and, and today, because I think that that does change on a day-to-day basis and sometimes mm-hmm. within a day and mm-hmm. we will need different things. It's, it's funny. I, um, I have an Apple watch and I just enjoy kind of geeking out and looking at numbers. So I got this app that started, um, started tracking my heart rate variability, which you're probably familiar with, but it basically, I need to do a whole nother episode on this quite to be quite honest, but it measures the, the distance in between your heart rates and it has a function. It kind of will be able to tell you a function of your stress level, um, whether or not you're rested or not. Uh, and you can use that in conjunction with training. So Mm -hmm. it's funny, like this morning I woke up and my, my heart rate variability was really high because I had, um, I didn't have a super heavy workout yesterday and I got like eight and a half hours of sleep, which was a lot of sleep for, I normally am like right about seven. And, and then I went and I did like a relatively intense hill workout and then it measured it again. And it was like low because huh. that was, you know, <laughs> it was like my body was ready. My body and my brain were ready for something more intense. And then I did, and then I'm not going to do that. You know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't do two a day workouts anyway, but like, I think that, you know, we have those fluctuations within the day and, yeah. and some days, like, I love how you say, we just need to go have a margarita and chips and guacamole. I don't know if you said salsa or guacamole, but for me, it's guacamole. I would probably uh, guacamole. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but like, we need to do that with our friends. And I, I love hearing um, other professionals say that because it is such a holistic way of, of doing it and of, of nourishing our, our mind, body, and spirit for sure. So thank you for that. Thank you for that grace. And thank you for the, the permission and the freedom to be able to make those choices for ourselves. That's awesome. Can you take a picture of that at some point? I want to put that like somewhere because um, I love, I love the shirt. I love it. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I'll write that down and send it to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I have a couple questions I ask all of my guests Yeah, and uh, they're kind of different. So the first one is I am fascinated by tattoos. I don't have any, but I have found that people who typically decide to put something on their body for the rest of their lives have a meaningful story behind it. So I was wondering if you, do you have any tattoos? And if you do, can you tell us a, a meaning behind it? And if not, if you had to get one, what would it be and where would it go? So I do have one. It's wonder. Um, oh, I love it. On, my on your forearm. Uh-huh. On my forearm where I see it every day. And it's so funny that you asked that because I I'm not a tattoo person either. Like I'm not against tattoos. I just never thought I would get one. And so the short story of that is I was sitting in church one day and we were talking about the part in Matthew where Jesus says, you know, look at the birds of the field, even they um, that they don't toil nor sweat and yet their heavenly father feeds them. Look at the flowers more glorious than Solomon and all of his glory. And yet they're here today and gone tomorrow. And we were just talking about what if in all of these places of need, like I need X, Y, Z, instead of coming to God with this kind of panic of like, I have to have this or I'm not okay. What if we came to him in a posture of wonder? We're just like, I know that you're going to fulfill this need. I wonder how you're going to do it. Um, and yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh Okay. Um, And as we're sitting in church, you know, count on one hand the amount of times I've quote, heard the audible voice of God, I just felt Holy Spirit in my spirit go, you're going to get wonder tattooed on your arm. And I was like, that's weird. That was definitely not my own thought because I don't really want a tattoo. I don't really care. So I sat on that for about two years and this theme of wonder just kept coming up as a lot of pieces of my life kind of fell apart unexpectedly. And I was definitely in this panic, like, am I going to be okay? And that just kept coming back. Like, I know that God is going to provide. I know that I'm going to be okay. And I wonder how he's going to do that. And then I went on a 16 night rafting trip in the Grand Canyon. Coolest trip I've ever taken in my life. And our head guide, anytime we would hike up into a a canyon or go somewhere, he would say, bring your camera, your water, and your childlike sense of wonder. Um, And I got out of that canyon and I drove straight to a tattoo shop and I said, I need this tattooed on my arm. And then what my artist did, which I think is so cool. So anyone who's done the Grand Canyon, there's this incredible overlook at Nankoweep Point. That's this really kind of quintessential outline of the canyon. And so if you cover up the bottom part of the word, the top part of the word, which I don't know how he did it, is the outline of the Grand Canyon at Nankoweep. Oh, wow. Okay, you have to take a picture of that too. I will. (laughs) I'll put put it in the show notes. (laughs) Oh, that's so cool. I love that story. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah, great Um, (laughs) <laughs> it's it's a fun one. It's a fun one. Uh, okay. So do you have a meaningful Bible verse that you would like to share? My life verse is uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Um, I had a friend, so I went through a, a pretty gnarly divorce. I don't believe in divorce. It's not anything I ever would have chosen. Um, and my husband decided he didn't want to be married and left and I didn't, I couldn't do anything about it. Um, and I'm so, so sorry. Thanks. <laughs> it was a, it sucks. Yeah. It really does. <laughs> it was yeah. not, not how I anticipated that going. But I had a friend send me a necklace with that verse when I was going through that. And I have held on to that with my whole heart and strength because that's, that's his promise over my life that you know, this isn't, I don't believe that divorce was his will. I don't believe that was right or that it should have happened. And yet, um, he has used that for my good in every way, shape and form. He has like his plans to prosper me. I have seen them. That'll make me cry. And like, I held on to that verse in, in that time where I, nothing was going right. Um, I was making $700 a month. My mortgage was 1700. Like I don't, understand how the math works out, but I think that's his promise over all of our lives. And I, I hold to that. Like if, if there's one thing that I can remember of his goodness and his promise and his faithfulness, it's that verse. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I'm sure that was just a really confusing and devastating time in your life. Like this is not what I stand for. This is not what I wanted. And yet here I am. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I'm trying to like, how can I, how can I transition out to, <laughs> how can people connect with you? There's no easy way of doing that. <laughs> totally. Man, that sucks. So moving on. <laughs> I mean, I'm all, yeah, yeah, because I don't want to, like, I don't want to appear, you know, unsympathetic at all. Like, this is, those are hard situations for sure, for sure. But I love, but God redeems, right? And God takes you. And, and I'm really glad to hear that you are, you know, that his plans for you are being shown in what you're doing and what you clearly Mm -hmm. have a lot of passion surrounding. Thank you. Yes, and amen. And it's long (laughs) enough ago, I can laugh about it. Like, I'll tell, tell friends that story and we'll just go like, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But I do want to give people, if you can, we will connect, we will link all of this in the show notes. Awesome. However, if people are, you know, out for a walk or driving or whatever, I want them to be able to hear where to connect with you. 
if you can let them know that, that would be great. Yep. So our website, www.livenourishedcoaching.com. You can go and connect with us there. There's a link in the upper right-hand corner to schedule a free consult. And we love doing that with people. Even if there's like one piece of this podcast that stood out to you that you have more questions about, schedule a free consult with us. And if you use code GRACEDHEALTH, um, if you decide that working with us is something you want to do, you'll get 20% off whatever you feel like is the right fit for you. And if we're not the right fit for you, we will point you to someone who is. So that's the best way to connect with us is just book a free consult, come have a conversation with us and go from there. And then um, you'll have the link in the show notes, but I can give you that supplement guide as well. Awesome. You can download that. Yep. Great. Okay. You have just armed us. Like you have just put all of the things and I really hope that, you know, listeners that we can start playing around with this and especially there's still a lot of confusion, right? Like there could still be a lot that we're trying to figure out. And so, you know, go over to Live Nurse Coaching and and book a free consultation and see if Hallie and her team can help you take the next right step or maybe figure out that little missing piece that's so hard sometimes. So definitely encourage people to do that. But Hallie, thank you so much for your time. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, this was absolutely delightful. It's been super fun to talk with you. Thank you for having me. I know we covered a lot of topics today. So if any of those make you more curious, whether it's gut health, whether it's chronic exhaustion, maybe it's uh, vitamins and being a little um, confused about that, be sure to sign up for a free consult over at livenourishedcoaching.com. I will have the link to that in the show notes, as well as some of the other resources that Hallie mentioned. Hallie and her team are simply a delight, and I highly recommend you just checking them out. 30 minutes free consult. You can't go wrong. If you haven't yet subscribed to or followed the podcast, make sure you hit that plus button so you don't miss any of this summer's new season beginning June 14th. I'm going to be sharing six types of movement every woman needs to be incorporating in her workouts. Don't worry. They do not include burpees or running. And in fact, a lot of it is more on the gentle side. These are supportive and foundational things that will help keep you injury free and make you feel great so you can move in the way you love to move. Each episode, I try to leave you with one simple thing to remember, and I'm actually going to quote Hallie on this. I just love, love, love her definition of nourishment. So I'm going to read it to you again, just in case you missed it. To treat me like I love me, eat vegetables, drink water, breathe, move, sweat, sleep, rest, create, Pray, center, play, choose joy, be me. Okay, that is all for today. Go out there and have a graced day.